uh, and I can call me to order at 6 p.m. This is the Carla Clinton Center roll call. was passed to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and attendance of meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Rockaway Township Board of Education has caused notice of the date, time, and place of said meeting to be published in the daily record, Sir Ledger, and posted in all the schools in the district, in the municipal building of the township and the township library. Does any board member wish to object to the conduct of this meeting for the purpose stated in the public notes. Can I have a motion to waive the flag? So moved. Second. So passed. Can I have a motion to go to closed session? So moved. Second. Let it be noted at 6 to 3 p.m.
That would be great. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. DiCarlo. I just wanted to build on some of the comments from Mrs. DiCarlo, but first, if I could just acknowledge Mrs. DiCarlo and the entire business office uh, to be sitting here tonight with the projected balanced budget on March 3rd for the upcoming school year in the middle of the pandemic is quite an accomplishment. So I know Mrs. DiCarlo has been 
working around the clock on this for the last several weeks, if not months. And so really appreciate you and your team. And I also appreciate our approach, which has been to work in partnership with our principals these last few weeks to really make sure we're all on the same page. Um, Mr. Carlo in their comments uh, alluded to a few exciting initiatives I just want to say a little bit more about. Um, the pre-K expansion piece um, is something that has been while it was not initially identified in our strategic planning process, has really come to light over the last year as something that is in real need, not only to uh, create some, some additional space at DBO, but also to create some additional opportunity in, in our community for more pre-K services. Um, and so this expansion to Birchwood is something we're super excited about. I'd be remiss not to acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. McCombs and Principal Maragon for their partnership these past two months and several of our central office leaders and sort of making sure that this initiative was well conceived and remains on track to launch successfully in September. Part of this initiative also includes an opportunity to launch a pilot of co-teaching um, at Birchwood. And then we are envisioning a two-year pilot where by the end of two years, we'll be able to offer a co-teaching full inclusion model in grades K through pre-K actually through five. Um, this is something that was a result of one of the direct recommendations from the PCG report. That's the special education audit we conducted and concluded, I guess, almost a year ago. And so that audit and those find, findings continue to guide our work and our planning. Um, and this investment aligns with that and then thereby aligns with our overall strategic goals. The other aspect of the, the budget as constructed, constructed um, does make some exciting investments um, to increase intervention services, uh, which we do think is paramount right now in preparation for um, moving beyond this pandemic and want to do all we can to accelerate student learning. And so having uh, additional academic intervention service here at Copeland allows us to build up our RTI services in the middle school. Um, and the additional special education teacher at, at allows us to provide more inclusive services here at Copeland as well. Um, and so again, very excited about those investments. And the other position that uh, Mrs. DiCarlo alluded to, the supervisor of special education allows us across the district to begin to think about providing more professional development, support curricular resources in our resource rooms as well as inclusion settings. And those, um, those uh, investments also align with the findings initially from that PCG report from a year ago. Uh, specific to um, the, our strategic goal overall of building and maintaining supportive cultures, this budget continues to invest in our Rutgers partnership, which provides us with two full-time psychologists, one here at Copeland and one that we split across the elementary schools. Uh, we're continuing to be very excited about um, this partnership and the positive results from this partnership in terms of offering more uh, student and family supports related to social emotional needs uh, for students who may be at risk, um, but also being able to uh, support our school counselors uh, when risk assessments may become a need. Um, and we're seeing um, some really positive impact on that partnership. And so we continue to invest in that. This budget also includes continued investment in restorative practices here at Copeland. Um, uh, it was the last board meeting, I believe, we had a presentation about the positive impact of the work for the last 18 months. And we really see this as another year, year and a half project before it really could take off in a self-sustaining way. And so we're excited to continue to invest in, uh, in those restorative practices um, um, resources, uh, not least of which will be, it was mentioned at the last board meeting, a revamping of the code of conduct here at Copeland to ensure that that language aligns with the values of restorative practices. So we're excited about that project. And then third, uh, again, related back to our overall strategic plan, one of the big uh, buckets that we've uh, identified as a priority is continuing investment in facilities and security. Uh, this budget does support um, some really significant infrastructure investments. One is the brand new water treatment system that is much needed at KDM. Uh, that project remains on track. I'll have an update to the KDM community uh, by the end of this week, uh, informing them about where we are with that. We're in the final stages of pulling permits um, from the Department of Environmental Protection. 
and uh, plan to have that project completed this summer. Uh, this budget supports that investment. The, a very significant and large infrastructure investment in this budget is the brand new HVAC systems uh, for DBO. DBO is the last of our six schools to have uh, their unit events and uh, be modernized and automated. Um, and so we have been working um, these last several months with Ms. DeCarlo and her team and our, our engineering firm uh, to design a plan that's appropriate for DPO's infrastructure, which is um, a bit unique in its age. The fact that it has a pitched roof limited our options initially in terms of what we could um, provide there. So this budget supports that investment as well as uh, new windows for DPO as well, which are also much in need. So, a year from this time, we expect DBO to really be, um, be an exciting place in terms of the quality of this building based on these investments. So there's a lot of exciting things uh, right now at these early stages of our planning for this budget. And so I wanted to highlight those and uh, can pause there for any questions uh, board members may have for our team. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Yes. I did not pull up the most recent enrollment that you shared with us, but in anticipation, do you see an increase or decrease, or are we flat with our enrollment? Um, we are losing a section in the Dr. County and in Dwyer kindergarten. Yes, so yeah. our projection for so we had a bubble across the district that you may remember two years ago. We did not see that bubble replicate itself a year ago. And so we are at this point very early on in the kindergarten registration uh, phases, but we are not anticipating uh, or not projecting another bubble. Um, that there are um, some opportunities that we see there potentially um, for a couple of elementary positions that may become uh, and I mean by opportunity, an opportunity to potentially repurpose for intervention services uh, that are very much on our radar. Um, and by the time we sort of finalize the budget in May, we should definitely have firmer numbers to determine whether or not some of those FTEs, it's a matter of two, maybe three, that we think um, would better be repurposed into intervention teachers and services. The wire in particular right now um, is compared to the other schools, um, down not at the same level of AI teachers. So there may be an opportunity there to bring them up to bar.
So when we budget those, we are allowed to budget 80% of what we receive this year. So usually there's like time to receive the awards, we can't go over the money, we can't do services, but we can't go more than 80% during the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sure. So we have Fund 20 is what I just uh, explained. Fund 30, we don't use it a lot, but what we use Fund 30 for is if we're going to have a construction project that's going to span years, where the district goes to a referendum and or there's a chunk of money that needs to be carried from year to year, you use Fund 30 for that. So when you close your books, you don't have to close Fund 30. And fund 40 is our bond repayment. So that's our principal and interest on our outstanding bond. The top ones, 10, 11, 12, and 13, we don't have it. Basically, our operating budget 10 is charter schools, 11 is just about everything, and 12 is a capital. Question, but maybe just the noticing where I noticed that the nurses supplies and library supplies and the office supplies in the different schools, it doesn't seem to be proportional to the population. I was wondering if there's like other things there that some of the schools could be like different than 150 kids. And this would not be the year to look at nurses supplies because right. it's during it, it's very next to the budget, it's the next year to what happened this year. Okay. And you move money around like crazy. It was probably not a good comparison this year. As far as our general supply lines, do we have a page in particular that I can look at for you? Uh, page four is the library, and then page six would be the office. And it just it wasn't proportional to the to the enrollment. That was my main problem. Page library materials. Yeah, and I'm just wondering, wondering if there's any other like projects that were going into that. It's still uh Mr. Amy, you still have the level library thing that you have to do that you said you still add to that. Okay. So you're still working on the project to get those books into the school? Yeah, so there's there's two two aspects there. So each class in particular we're working on the building individual class in my way, but also in my lines there's uh, I'll just call your attention to if you see a big um, difference in our out of district tuition versus our extraordinary services. We reclass um, our out of district aid. We were paying on all under the tuition line, and when we added this to the payment out of the year, of course, we switch the uh, account number that we use. So we'll put a rest on the um, 
out of district tuition and then in the triple zero two seventeen account, which is the extraordinary service that we need to do from there. Money. I think some of my questions generally are based upon the fact that we're in the classroom and really changing the title. Yes. So I apologize for the <laughs> So I apologize if they seem a little redundant. But it's found on page 52. This might be a Peter question. Um, we have six new positions. Page 62, right? Salaries? Yes, sir. Thank you. Get there. Those are part of the um, pre, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Carl, that's part of the pre K expansion. Those staff assistants. with uh, some more information about uh, the current use and updated version. Updated version. Now, today, we can put that into an IP and maybe teach them a little bit more 
how you use these you know, add those types of resources and tools. You know, Google, we went through there, we we'll to take a highlight of the question, but Google costs us a lot of money. There's a lot of tools and resources. So we can be getting the money to some another department to be more effective for that purpose, in my opinion. So the, the important question to ask, though, um, and the answer will evolve over the coming weeks, a couple months. Um, I'll tell you our current thinking, uh, which is informed by the impending launch of the K-1 strategy, is you know guidance we've given to our teachers, kindergarten, first grade, in this strategy internally has been that we are not attempting um, to hold ourselves to the standard of one-to-one -one in kindergarten, first grade. In fact, we're excited to turn the computers off. I know it sounds odd <laughs> to say that, um, but we're kind of excited to do that with this K-1 strategy. And then, you know, the question we'll be looking to answer in the coming months is, you know, where does the one-to-one -one start uh, you know, uh, clearly starting first grade going forward, but and I think there's a you know a desire to potentially go fourth, fourth and third and to have the capacity in the elementary schools to be one to one, not to take home. Uh, but the current structure of our one to one program is to launch it in fifth, and then for that computer to stay with the, that student family through eighth grade and then uh, beyond. Um, and then to the other part of your question about what will school look like in September? So there still are some unknowns and I'm going to be redundant saying that, but uh, some of the questions that we'll be exploring in the next couple of months are, if in September, uh, we expect to have PB, we probably will have masks on and so on, but if the conditions of the pandemic are such that social distancing guidelines are reduced and we, have, we don't have to do a hybrid in terms of student cohorts and we're all back, um, there's still a likelihood that there will be some percentage of our community that will want a full virtual model. And the question we'll have to answer as a district is, do we continue to provide that through hybrid instruction um, in terms of that means, let's say you could have a classroom of 19 students in, uh, let's say, fifth grade and one student in that home was full virtual and then that student participates through the Chromebook. Or does what we're trying now with the K-1 strategy um, look more like a K-5 strategy in September, where there's a more of a virtual, full virtual experience for the full virtual families? I think that's a question that's very much on our radar. Um, and there's a reason I'm framing a K-5, because right now I don't envision a world where we could expand that into the middle school. There are so many other requirements at the middle school level for content expertise and so on. Um, so there is the possibility that hybrid instruction, at least at the middle school, will need to continue if we're required as a district in New Jersey to provide virtual instruction uh, to all of our families, which is dictated by uh, the governor's monthly executive order. Yeah, I I will certainly come back on the agenda book question. Um, so I'm sorry if I went off on tangent there. With no worries. Uh, Ms. Shields, anything to follow up on? Or? Not explicitly, and so the reason I said it that way is because if we if we decide that that might if the demand in the community is great enough, like if the numbers are in September that we have still twenty percent demanding a full virtual, uh, we may need to within the confines of a balanced budget repurpose some positions um, to be full virtual if we think that's a better way to serve both populations, if you would, the in person and the full virtual. That's something. We should, we'll be uh, looking at closely over the coming months.
I know my son, I was making him do the Google Calendar, and it wasn't working for him. And I made him physically use the agenda book because he needs something tangible. But not every kid needs that. I have two different kids in my house, and one's fine with the Google Calendar, but the other one needed something that wasn't digital to be able to be tangible. So, you know, I'm not saying you know, keep them all, but, you know, because that is a lot of money. And if we're not, if they're having a problem with a backpack, I hear you. I mean, we basically don't, it might be something where there's something in the middle where we don't right. need it overdrive per se. But. Right. Some people might need it, and in the middle kids too. Like, I don't know how to communicate. Like, that was part of the way of communicating at home. Like, I'm not going to communicate with the little kids. You know, with the little kids. You know, they need to bring in their agenda book to check it off. You know, virtually, uh, maybe it becomes more of a district yes. um, item that you can purchase. So it's not like school customized. I know that you know that that someone who goes out and you know does hard meandering and custom projects. It's extremely it's not a cost efficient if you were just to get say a thousand agenda books for Rockland County School. And you know, just, they don't have to even include the exact date calendar either. Mm -hmm. They're truly just standardized books. And if that's a tool or a resource that at some schools, just like for example, an IP, if that's a tool that we want to give out to the students. Right. Um, I just, I look through it and it, it's in every school. I know it seems minor to some people, but when you start to add it up, you have potentially $10,000 on the table that maybe we could be also utilizing for a PD, for the IT department too, to teach these kids how to be more known, whether it's on paper, whether it's digital. You know, I realized during this whole pandemic, I have a sophomore, a freshman, a sixth grader, and a fifth grader. My kids don't really know how to check email, right? So that's also part of the agenda item and all of that. So I'm just looking to potentially maybe repurpose those funds into a more efficient way and really help everyone, not just here's a book we did our job. Understood. And not to belabor that point, but that was what I was about to say that I think perhaps it having just a district wide planner maybe would help with that. Got it. Thank you. I have a little side note, a little longer. We were talking about email and teaching the kids how to. So I was <laughs> showing my son how to make folders and have one for each class and put the emails in there. So he goes, What do I do with all these emails from Don and Triplet? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my he goes, Don and Triplet. I look, he says, Do not be quiet. <laughs> <laughs>
while we're in wire, I have a, another question that comes up every year in Chautauqua Fuller. It's not just wired in other schools, but they're never consistent. So it's now lead graduation in trip shirts. Everyone's asking for different amounts of money within their school budget for these items. Uh, some schools don't have it at all. So I'm just, again, curious how, if that's a district wide thing that we're doing specifically for this, for the, this grade. Why is it not making a miscellaneous like as opposed to embedded in your school? So on page four, you'll see lead graduation and trip shirts, additional $500. Like the same thing, like ADM was eleven hundred dollars. Like the, the prices are inconsistent. Um, but if it's a lead district wide thing for the fifth graders, how can this be itemized out in each individual school? Well, I know just from being at DBO and then going to um, Dwyer as a liaison, they had very different subdivisions. I mean, they came in um, some of their activities were different. I think the program is the same, but you know, obviously it was not legal, it was something else. But right, like so for EBO, it doesn't have to be different. I'm just on that. If we're going to itemize out it, yeah. particular events, um, it should long probably long be because yeah. the district wide part of the program. I don't think it should be embedded in each school. You know that particular thing if it's a, it's a celebration like I, I understand copeland has the graduation embedded that's copeland students but maybe it's because the none of the price points line up either like some people want 500 some people want 1500 you know it just it doesn't seem to make sense and if it's including the transportation to the trip that's something we cover on our end anyway so again it, i know there's also notes but we're going to put in the notes to be so specific. I'd like to be services. I keep getting emails from the Gordon State Coalition and I know we talked about taking that out. And I didn't know if it was still in here or not. Because if they want to send me the stuff great, I'm okay with that. You know, they, they're still on their their thing, but you know, I just we don't need a letter. We don't. So you may recall we was back in our and at some point in our summer of the pandemic we uh we decided not to renew that. Um, they they had since then come back and offered us to continue without charge. So we have been getting that without charge this year. I've been participating in the last three, I believe it was. Uh, it proved to be informative, so I was going to kind of wait till the end of the year to see if we want to reconsider. Uh, but it is here if we decide we want to do it. Um, the last one did include Senator Ruiz, which was informative to hear what she was thinking about current you know, conditions. Or is it just 
Uh, they, what, we basically went back and said, this is, we, we wanted to discontinue our services. And they said, I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or because they wanted to try to keep their enrollment up. They said, you could continue for the year without charge and then we can reevaluate. Oh, no. Yeah. I like free stuff. Um, it, it has been free this year and it's proven to be pretty helpful. So I'm just going to give it a couple of months. If you want to use it as a quarter, it's just we were using it at the time. So that's why I said Got it. Okay, 
not going to take a group of test before you start. Anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, one more question, actually. Um, under curriculum, the district, the, uh, the purchase of uh, swing, was that still working? Swing? Have we been utilizing it? Not regularly, but it, it is as a backup. We have used it, utilized on occasion. Um, but it's not a frequent presence in the school, so I'm not sure if Mr. Cole has any other insight on that, but it's not something that uh, was initially visioned to, to the first week on. I mean, obviously, uh, the original appropriation was 70000 and now the proposed is 50000 so obviously we're bringing it down. But our current expenditure is only 135 so we're not sure.
But as we reopen, we have to think about what that means for how many more people have in school and how we increase those bathroom limits, how we keep kids safe, how we get kids in and out of the bathroom, and things like that. So we got to look at those logistics. But I'm sure there's others. Um, school lunch app issues, school lunch have been awful. I tried four times today. Um, I think delivery, um, I think my school, I signed in first, and then all of a sudden you get to the end, it's like delivery. Um, and, and I have friends who their kids are supposed to get taken home from Copeland, and then all of a sudden the lunches aren't there that they're supposed to take home from week. We have kids in school, at least for the kids in the school, we know they're coming. There should still be lunch available. My daughter has not not got lunch, but after I've done it four times, and sometimes I work 60 hours a week, you know, I go to do it, and I forget, and I forgot on Monday, on Tuesday, my poor kid didn't have any lunch. I will, but you know, I tried four times before that. It shouldn't be that hard. It should keep remembering to get to sign up here for lunch. And we always did lunch before even when we had tag. Um, so the web app is or the app for the phone for the pizza slice, not working at all. There's even a banner on for it. Uh, they change times, you know, they change when you put the lunch in. So I suggested why don't we just ask the kids at school? You know, like ask them what they want for lunch the next week or something, and we can call them a day as well for the kids that are getting to lunch. There's gotta be some other solutions because the app and everything is horrible. Uh, CO2 monitors. I don't know if we're looking into those. I'm not sure scientifically how great they are, but uh, what happens is you exhale CO2. That CO2 could be carrying the virus, uh, depending on how many air exchanges are making the air. Uh, if you keep the CO2 under a certain amount of parts per million, you may know, you know how fresh your air flow is. Because if we all breathe, the CO2 is sitting around. Um, and so that might be something we want to look into. Uh, I don't know what the cost, I said cost, I don't know what <laughs> But the, but the commercial off the shelf type items are versus you know the stuff that industrial hygienists could possibly use to determine what your air exchange flow rates are. Um, you know, so something we might want to look into. I think they're pretty cheap, but it could also give us an idea of what's happening in the classrooms before kids go back to school full time, which will hopefully be soon. Um, and then lastly, the inconsistency with schools and scheduling changes, you know, it just creates havoc. Um, I think we very the, the my biggest issue was the day that we had the delay and then all of a sudden we have a delay, then the next morning at 6.40, my phone rings. Many people's phones may not even be on, get a phone call until 7 a.m. Um, and then all of a sudden we're going to school, you know, all day. And so I think the, if you delay it, you need to then have a delayed opening, even virtually, so people can prepare. So these are kind of some things that maybe, you know, you guys can strategize about in the future, especially, you know, staying in the hybrid model, because I hope we don't, you know, and we don't have to go back to it. But I do think that we got to get the kids back to school, but we got to think about how we're handling all these delays and openings and closings and, you know, switching green to gold days. And, and I think after the first few times, I would think we would have predicted this, you know, to see how this would have come out. So I just appreciate there's more thought. And if you guys need any help or thought, I can help you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Kerman. Um, I'm sorry that that happened with your daughter. Um, and I know that you had sent a email earlier today regarding lunch. Um, have you forwarded any of this other information? Um, the CO2 monitors I have not, um, and the school, um, as far as the, the issues with the bathroom, I did forward that, I did forward that from Stony Brook, you know, like I said, the nurse has been responsive, but I think it could become a district problem, you know, if you do send the kids back to school. Um, I haven't sent any recommendations about bringing kids back to school, and actually, um, on top of that, is the health department of Rockaway, they play any role in the reopening of schools? Uh, no, I didn't think so. Okay, that was a question from another friend. I'm here to represent a few people. Besides myself. And I can send the info on the CO2 monitor uh, articles as well. Again, I don't know the validity of the science yet. I think it's something new. Um, industrial hygienists would have like a $10,000 meter to tell you what you were getting for your rates. So. Thank you for that. And um, with the delay, there was a message sent out um, regarding that. And we appreciate that. I, I did appreciate the apology, but I just think that it was like, it, it just keeps happening. You know, like even, even like my, all of my coworkers on my team. We all go to Rockway schools. And it cracks me up when, you know, my my goes, oh no, my son's going to school. They're like, no, he's not. Like, you know, <laughs> check your email. Yeah. But and I do think we should put more in the app, lastly. Okay. You know, like like you have the app flash up, you know, no school tomorrow. Because the app's just telling you to get an email or check my email. But that's what people use apps for to communicate. But thank you. otherwise, thank you. I appreciate your your, your comments. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to comment after, after the sure. public comment has ended. Um, I will address the aspects of the reopening plan in a community update at the end of this week. And uh, I do definitely hear the feedback about the green gold schedule um, and the changes. Um, we'll continue to be as sensitive about that as we possibly can. 
Uh, going forward, um, I'm glad you communicated with the school about the bathroom concerns. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, regarding the CO2 filter idea, uh, we are in constant uh, discussion uh, with our engineers about appropriate uh, HVAC systems. And you know they continue to report that our systems are not only functioning, but up to the standard. Um, and as we prepare for what not only the next few weeks looks like, but also September, uh, we'll ensure that we've got the most up-to-date technology we have in our classrooms that we possibly can. So, just a point of clarification because I just want to learn that I wasn't sure um, how the health department is controlling. Oh, I can. The health department um, is a extremely important partner uh, to our schools uh, since day one of our reopening plan. Our school nurses are in daily contact with the local health department. In some cases, I am as well. Uh, the health department is take the lead on all contact tracing when there is a positive case associated with the school community and everything we do we do in consultation with the health department um, and have since stable sure sure Thank you. Uh, if there's nobody else in the uh, that is here to speak in the uh, public hearing i'm going to turn to the virtual portion i believe we have at least one person sitting in the, in the waiting room Can you hear us? I think you're on you. Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, so um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Mary Mary, the Ward 1 Council person in Rockaway Township, and I am also the liaison for the school board. Um, so I just want to- One second, we're having technical issues. I'm sorry? One second, we're having technical issues. It's both the body, hold on. Okay. Okay. Please make sure you have your uh, computer muted. The stream. It's saying unmute. Okay. 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 I'm sorry about that. Please continue. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I just, my name is Mary Noon. And I am the Ward 1 Council person for Rockaway Township, and I am also the liaison for um, between the school board. I'm on tonight to introduce myself and uh, to let you guys know to reach out to me with anything um, that you want me to mention at the council meetings in my reports or anything that's going on. I am getting the you know emails with the links, and I am looking. I know kindergarten registration is this month. Um, and I also plan on mentioning about the dying to donates for the uh, Brick 46 and also the RJs, um, which I think is great. But I just wanted to come on and introduce myself. And um, that's it. Thank you very much for um, your outreach and communication to us. We will be sure that we will be sending information your way. And please feel welcome to always come. And visit okay. Us. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone else? No. Okay. Can I please have a motion to close uh, public comments? So moved. Second. Joe Panzer? Okay. Thank you. I have no force of communications um, at this at this moment before since the last board meeting. I checked board mail earlier today and there was nothing in tomorrow. I was seeing if there's nothing else. No, there's nothing in Okay, thank you so much. 
Um, uh, next on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the February 17th board meeting. Can I please have a motion to approve, approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion from board members regarding the minutes? Mrs. DiCarlo, can I please have a roll call? Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Cornwallow? Yes. Mrs. Mezzik? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mr. Tomasini? Yes. Mrs. Helbor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the superintendent's report. Thank you, President Hubbard, and good evening, Rockaway Township. With tonight's budget planning work session for the 21-22 school year, we've officially kicked off our planning for how our schools will operate during the 21-22 school year. The budget we are developing aligns with our overall strategic priorities of ensuring academic success for all students, creating and maintaining a supportive culture for all, and continue to invest in our facilities and security to ensure safe learning environments for all. At our next board meeting on March 17th, I will provide a more detailed update related to our strategic plan and our overview and an overview of student academic achievement to date, which will very much inform our planning for the remainder of this school year and the for us to bring more students back for more in-person instruction. I will share a community update about the status of our reopening plan before the end of this week. While the conditions of the pandemic appear to be improving, we will remain cautious and measured in our approach to ensure the safety of our students and staff remains our top priority. This approach has served us as well dating back to September, so I am mindful of not deviating too dramatically from the values and plans which allowed us to reopen our schools safely and keep them open for in-person instruction during some of the challenge, most challenging conditions of the pandemic. Sadly, we don't need to look too far to find communities struggling to maintain a challenging times. On behalf of our entire leadership team and staff, I cannot overstate enough the level of gratitude and appreciation we feel for Rockaway Township's ongoing support for and partnership with our schools during these times of heightened anxiety and stress for all of our families. I remain hopeful the worst of the pandemic is behind us and I'm optimistic and excited about what is on the horizon. I, could, I also could not be prouder of all we have accomplished together this school year. We are in the final laps of this marathon, so we may, so we may all remain vigilant with the daily implementation of our safety protocols to ensure we all finish this marathon together with an even, strong, even stronger partnership than we had prior to the pandemic. We truly are better together. Thank you. And with that, I conclude my report for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Keith. Does anyone have any comments or questions? I just have one comment question. We will be morning with the opening and then yellow to orange. That's actually fluctuating. So, I, I, that does have a major influence on what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, to your question, President Health Board, um, the orange status uh, relates to uh, a weekly report that's produced across the state of New Jersey. Um, New Jersey's broken down to different regions. And until last week, uh, we had been in the high risk area of orange and had been in that space um, dating back to several months. Um, the move to yellow occurred um, just last week. It was a very promising sign. And what we're looking to now is to see if we can maintain that level over a period of time. Um, and the other piece of information that we're eagerly anticipating and we're hearing will be is, is imminent is updated guidance from the New Jer Jersey Department of Health um, about um, overall conditions in schools to continue to safely reopen. Uh, the key aspect in that guidance that a lot of us have our eyes on is the social distancing guidelines. Uh, our approach since day one and the commitment we made to our staff and families was that in, in almost everything we did, we would do our best to maintain six feet when possible. And so in order to more dramatically reopen our schools, uh, that guidance would have to be um, revised to be not as restrictive. Um, so that's very much informing our thinking. Yes. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Uh, 
followed the committee reports. So are there any committee reports? I just have a quick one. Uh, the Google Committee is meeting on Thursday, March 11th. They are to any decisions that the committee are able to make. Okay. I just have a quick note. Now, we can remember our first meeting next Wednesday the 10th at 530. Um, this is our board. It's going to take a little bit of some music. Um, Uh, have met on uh, February 24th virtually to do our uh, discussion of the public policy and the public policy next board meeting and start reviewing all the other things. Our next meeting is May 29th. Okay. Okay. Um, Mrs. Smith asked me to um, relay about the education committee. So we're meeting on Wednesday, March 10th. From Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next section um, on the agenda recommendations for board action under personnel. We have three new sections for personnel. Uh, we have several items uh, going on to page four. Uh, the personnel, we will have no discussion. This is a Oh, any motion? I call it. No. Don't move. Thank you. Spend a motion, please, to approve the superintendent's recommendation. Don't move. Thank you for taking that. Okay. So, all that stuff that I said before, distracted you know, I was. I absolutely was. Um, so, this is a front point here, ready? Can I do that? I'm not going to call vote on personal items. Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mr. Colorado? Yes. Mrs. Messing? Yes. Mrs. Shield? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Elmore? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, the next section is HIV. Can I please have a motion to approve the HIV resolution? So moved. Second. All right. This resolution, um, we're voting on this. It's unconfirmed as the superintendent's recommendation. Can I please have a roll call on the HIV resolution? Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Pilaro? Yes. Mrs. Mezek? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Thomasini? Yes. Mrs. Elmore? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. We have one current investigation that is unconfirmed, and that will be our vote for next meeting. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Thank you for confirming that correctly. All right. The next section is education, and we have three items. Can I please have a motion? Second. Like a race here. Um, do I have any board discussion on education items? I just love to see student teachers. I see that every time. It's wonderful. They gotta learn somewhere. Okay, um, if there's no other board discussion, I can open it up to the public for discussion. Is anyone from the public? Would be there? Good? Okay. So, can I please have a roll call vote on education items? Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Perlaro? Yes. Mrs. Mezek? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Elmore? Yes. Thank you so much. We have no special education, education, and finance. Today, then we will move on to the policy. But I think have a motion to approve the policy recommendations. So, second. Okay. Um, is there any board discussion here? Yeah, I mean, it's so. I'm speaking with the with the to the policy. I'm um, the only one to ask is this a table from over the policy last time? The restart recovery program remote learning options for families was adjusted to meet the current environment with the kindergarten and the first year coming back. Uh, the military leave policies um, are up for review for the public and I just think we need to bring it back. 
That's what I was going to say. Is having it on here and listed as part of the motion to approve brings it back off the board. Okay, okay. Can we make a roll back? Okay. Okay. Um, so, regarding, so everything was covered with that. Uh, but then the bullet, because I know we had to be able to agree with the next right? And that's what we need to get. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Okay. Any further discussion with that? Okay. Um, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this section? Okay. Thank you. All right. Can I please have a roll pull on policy? Mrs. Brook? Yes. Mrs. Colorado? Yes. Mrs. Medrick? Yes. Mrs. Shiro? Yes. Mrs. Thomas? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, the next section is old or new business. Anyone have any old or new business? I got a little something. So, I was able to attend the, uh, the DBO PTA meeting on uh, February 22nd. I, I can tell you, very exciting. Uh, I was excited to be there. Uh, they have a lot of fun initiatives that are coming up. Uh, very productive, high energy. Uh, so, I really appreciate it. For Fact they they invite me into the room and allow me to observe. Uh, you know, you like it at the time? It's good. My, my, my summary is not quite as good because uh, uh, Mr. Maragon went before me and he definitely. He had a summary, but he was spot on. So uh, it, it was excellent. I was, I was very excited for the K1 initiative that he went first. Okay. It made you feel better. I was the KMPK meeting last night. I didn't care, and I talked about how excited I was. Anyway, <laughs> um, is that what you're doing now? Yes. So I just have business, I guess. I went to KMP gaming last night, and I just really want to comment on again all the staff really going above and beyond in these very dark times. They they started running a meeting night last year in conjunction with the PTA, and they had kids come into the building, and they would have the notes and all of that jazz. And a lot of people were doing it. It was just so awesome to hear. How the teachers decided to do something virtual instead. And the teachers and staff members in the building are reading books and recording it and kind of creating like an archive similar to back to school night videos to do this like um, website for virtual reading nights for the school. And I just thought it was just a great way to not to say, oh, forget it and be discouraged about it. They came up with a simple way to kind of still make it happen. So again, I know the teachers across the entire district are doing all the awesome things as well as the administrators. It's just so nice to be here. You know what? The date's coming on, you realize it's on the calendar, and they didn't clock it. They came up with a new one. I just love that, and I thank everyone for that. Um, the second note is a little business for us. Our little board calendar is up and ready. I hope everyone can access it see it. If you can't, and you're having trouble, Tanya, um, <laughs> let me know, and we'll get down to it. But everything, any dates that I have are almost everything. Um, I think maybe there's a few meetings on things, like I know the education on there yet, but send me any dates you have, and we'll just keep it as updated as possible. And that's all I have. Anyone else? Okay. All right. Well, um, that leads into the second open public comment section. Anybody in the meeting? Is there anybody in the public that would like to speak? Um, the public comment has to be on. Um, Everything is just so long, but it's really fun. As long as it pertains to what happened in the meeting and the okay. the recording for the moment comes on that. Okay, well, we're going to open up. Mike, please have a motion to open public comment. So moved. Second. That was me this time. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Show hands, please. Thank you. Okay, we did open. You can come to. Hi, my name is April Perluck, 33 Mount Hope Road. Um, I do want to say that I do appreciate everything that you guys are doing. I understand things are very difficult, you know, during COVID times. You know, I understand reopening a school um, is not necessarily that easy of a task either. Um, and I would like to just clarify that when I was talking about the CO2 meters, it didn't really have anything to do with the ventilation being ineffective. It's just another measure, you know, to see like, you know, what's sitting around because pockets of air too can, you know, get stuck in places, that kind of thing. And I will send that in for forward. Um, you know, and lastly, I, I understand we want to be cautious, you know, I get it. Trust me, 
I'm like the number one crazy person when it comes to wanting to stay home and double mask and do this other stuff. You know, I've been vaccinated, that's why I'm here tonight, it's been over two weeks. But at the same time, I do think that we've done a good job. I think we've done a good job of keeping, you know, the COVID transmission in the schools from not happening. And I do think it will present a challenge for bringing kids back. But I still think a good percentage of people are going to still keep their kids virtual. So, you know, if one third keeps their kids virtual and we're bringing back that other third, even if it's four days a week, you know, and somewhere in there we have a, you know, a half day and things like that, um, that would be great. Because I do think that aside from parents working challenges, schedules and kids, you know, um, they're, they're just not thriving. You know, I hear this from many parents, unless a parent has someone that can stay home and sit there with the child at all times. And I have had my mother-in-law and my mother, my mother, God bless, um, at my house two days a week, you know, and that takes a mental toll on parents as well. So, <laughs> as well as the kids, but that's what we need. You know, we need to have the kids back. You know, I think the end of March is pretty reasonable, um, or even right after, you know, um, I think I think the end of March or mid-March even, I know we're coming up in a week or two, would be really reasonable because my then concern is people are going places probably in spring break, right, and going to come back, you know, or maybe the middle of April, you know, like a week after spring break. So I think we need to think about these things because kids need to come back. Um, and the parents that want to keep their kids virtual, they're going to keep their kids virtual. You know, and I think that will still benefit the ones that want to go to school because you're going to decrease the numbers. Okay. Um, and as more people get vaccinated, you know, I know there won't be anything for children until 2022. I think we're going to see the numbers start to decline dramatically in my mind in the middle of April um, at that point. So I just wanted to thank you guys. Um, you know, I don't want to beat anybody up. But the kids back in school. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. So again, I'll just again thank you for your public comment. We always appreciate the feedback. Um, you raise an interesting point about what's unique and has been unique across all communities, uh, not only in the state but even in Morris County. The number of families opting for full virtual varies significantly. Uh, in just some of our neighboring communities, uh, the numbers are 30, 40%. And that has allowed them to be able to come back more full time, even though many of them still have, aren't doing lunch, but and not have the social distancing challenges. You know, I'm proud that so many of our families want to be back. Our number has really hovered around 20%. Uh, and that is a significant challenge for us to accelerate it. Um, and, and so just, you know, wanted to comment on that because it's an extremely important uh, determining factor that is not uh, consistent across the communities. And so I'm happy to talk to you after the meeting adjourns. Um, the public comment isn't meant to be a Q&A. Uh, so I'm just responding to your comment and appreciating your, your comment. You got And so you got it. Thank you. All right. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. And the next portion of our agenda is to adjourn. So now I can have a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. And let it be noted at 8.04 p.m. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Be safe.